All right, Ludwig uh, Feuerbach, um, the essence of Christianity. Let's let's take a look at that. Now, this is directly what Marx and Engels are arguing against in a lot of their writing is Feuerbach. And the reason why they're arguing so pointedly against Feuerbach is because as Althusser argues, and I think I think that interpretation makes a lot of sense. Althusser was very serious about trying to get inside of the head of Marx and, and understand the different stages of, of his uh, progress as a, as a philosopher and an economist. Um, uh, according to Althusser, Marx was a committed, you know, committed to the philosophy of Feuerbach from 1841 to 1847, somewhere, and then somewhere between 1846, 1847, 1848, somewhere around there, right before the writing of the Communist Manifesto, um, Marx and Engels find a major flaw in Feuerbach. And, and then that's what, and it's that, that flip from thinking in terms of Feuerbach to thinking on their own terms that make Marx and Engels so unique and, um, and powerful in their writing. Because now they've, now they've really established their own philosophical grounding by distinguishing themselves from Feuerbach. Uh, which means that they carry over a lot of things of Feuerbach. Now Feuerbach was a student of Hegel. Uh, and he wrote The Essence of Christianity actually thinking that he was giving an interpretation of, of Christianity that was fully or at least compatible with Hegel's philosophy. Uh, Hegel took a look at it and he didn't think so. All right, so Feuerbach uh, sort of unwittingly, it seems, uh, from what we know, uh, developed something that was Hegelian, but something that Hegel could not himself swallow. So Feuerbach is a, a unique character, but, but deeply embedded in this Hegelian philosophy. Now, what he develops, and this is in 1841, remember that the Communist Manifesto came out at the very beginning of 1848. So it's just a few years before, but in this meantime, uh, you know, Marx has a love affair, you know, philosophically with Feuerbach, and then, and then has a falling out. Um, now, uh, this is an atheist Christian theology. So, as uh, Schleiermacher suggested in some places, maybe that Christianity could be conceived of uh, on atheistic terms. But um, but Feuerbach wants to argue directly against Schleiermacher that um, that what he means by atheism is that you know there is no God to depend upon, so we can't have this feeling of dependence that Schleiermacher says is the essence of Christianity and the essence of religion. Uh, and then he he develops. Um, this notion of Hegelian alienation. So as I suggested earlier, Hegel in the master-slave discourse, you know, the body is alienated from the mind in that Cartesian way of thinking. And then the whole master-slave discourse is to overcome alienation and to recognize that what you thought was something other than yourself is really uh, an aspect of your own self. Um, and so what, Feuerbach does is says, it says that God is alienated humanity that we we rather than uh, or that God is really originally part of humanity and through religion we've alienated and taken a part of ourselves as humans and projected it into this, this image of God. So that God is an image of humanity, not the other way around, as Schleiermacher would say. And, and this really is a break from traditional Protestant uh, Christian theology, 
So this is not something that's going to be convincing to uh, the Lutherans uh, of the day. Um, you know, Feuerbach is really arguing against Schleiermacher and saying, uh, again, that God is an image of humanity where we just take all the kind of great and uh, really perfections that exist within the human, our abilities to think and uh, discover, all our scientific knowledge and, and all of our uh, knowledge about mathematics and even our philosophical uh, discoveries through um, you know, self-reflection like Hegel talks about, that ability to grow and to always sort of progress. And there is this idea of progression still built in and that's what's very Hegelian. He still sees history as going up and up and up uh, and human beings are getting better and better and better. And there is a kind of entelechy in that uh, in a common sense way, but we embody that entelechy in this alienated image of God that God is somehow different from us. And, and then we, we worship and, and belittle ourselves uh, in this absolute dependence to something that we fictitiously created. Um, and, and so, you know, that has a, a certain appeal. And so, uh, so what, Feuerbach wants us to do in this, the, in, you know, and it still is a theology. It still is always talking about religion. Um, and so it, it's not like it, it's something other than theology. There is a theological sort of a theological message in all this. And so the, what is suggested is that, <clears throat> is that, um, is that the goal is to reappropriate what has been alienated from us and therefore progress humanity to a higher level of existence, a, a, so, social, uh, a socialist, you know, there, this is, you know, fits in with like Owenite socialism, utopian socialism, that we can do better because all we have to do is to reappropriate what, it, what we've alienated from ourselves in God. If we just reappropriate those wonderful things that we, we put in the image of God and we, we really uh, own them as our own, then we can do better. We can make the world a better place. Uh, and we just have to own it and, and do it. Uh, which is very revolutionary. And we can see, uh, hopefully you can kind of see how that's very inspirational for somebody like Marx that is thinking about, uh, even at this time, of course, in vague terms, but it starts to become very clear in the coming years as he's contemplating for a that, um, that the revolution is coming, the socialist revolution is coming. Uh, and, and one way of thinking about this is that uh, Feuerbach is sort of doing the master-slave discourse, but starting, rather than starting from the perspective of the master, the mind as master, starting from the perspective of body as slave, and then discovering how, you know, through the same uh, 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 a sort of inverted master-slave discourse, the body discovers that it's both body and mind sublimates into this higher state of consciousness uh, where it thought that the mind was something separate from the body. Because of course, once you start talking about atheism, now you're getting, now you're leaning into empiricism, like a Lockean empiricism, where the body could just be a machine and maybe the mind is, is uh, if the mind is something separate, then maybe there's a total disconnect. Um, but what Feuerbach wants to do is to do a kind of master-slave discourse, incorporate both body and mind, but saying that body and mind were always originally unified and that it's only through religion that 
this alienation of mind from body is justified and, and somehow validated, but falsely. Um, and so, and, and still thinking in this uh, Hegelian historical terms, you know, Feuerbach would see like Schleiermacher influencing liberal Christianity and the changes that were taking place uh, through the 19th century and, uh, and socialism on the rise, that this is really human beings reaching a higher level of consciousness where they are in fact incorporating aspects of God. You know, it's a very, it's a very um, progressive, um, enthusiastic and, um, and, and optimistic view of humanity where humanity is getting better and better because it is becoming more conscious of its own inherent goodness and perfection which it used to think was something separated from it in in the form of god uh, okay so i think so it's overcoming alienation again but in the opposite direction in a Hegelian way. And uh, in a kind of Schleiermacherian way, if, if Schleiermacher could say that there could be an atheist Christianity, then Feuerbach could just be talking about uh, Christianity reaching a, a level where it no longer needs the concept of God. And, and then, and then, oh, for Feuerbach too, Jesus is a central uh, sort of image here, is that Jesus, um, Jesus as a human being born in history realizes that he is God, right? And so Jesus claiming to be God and the Christian faith built around that uh, assertion is an embodiment of the of what Feuerbach is arguing that God is just part of the human nature, and Jesus is an image of this. Okay, so um, so that is that is good for Feuerbach. Okay. <clears throat> 